Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. We are back and better than ever, and we are here, 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 we are here to build you up, Buttercup. We are not going to let you down because we are continuing our excellent, most excellent journey into calculus. What a wonderful world that is. And today we are talking about kinematics. And what is kinematics? I pulled a definition from Webster's. And it is just the study of motion, really, the motion of an object. Um, and in this course, we're going to be talking about the motion along a horizontal line. Um, and we don't consider the mass of the object or the force acting upon the object. Well, we just talk about the position of the particle, um, the velocity, and the acceleration. Um, I do want to talk about displacement just to make sure that we understand what displacement is. Um, displacement is the distance from the starting point or from the origin. Okay? It doesn't matter how far you traveled. Um, displacement is just the distance. So like, let's say this was a, a walk and then you started walking back and then you walked again and then you turned around and then you ended up right here at P. Well, the displacement is this distance right here. It's not the total distance you traveled. It's just this distance right here. Okay. Um, we use lowercase s of t to represent the dis displacement function for any value of t, where t is time. Um, it is a vector quantity. Um, so its magnitude is the distance from zero and its sign indicates the direction from zero. For example, if the displacement function is greater than zero, it's located to the right of the origin. If it's equal to zero, it's at the origin, and if it's negative or to less than zero, it is to the left of the origin. The displacement function is also known, and I, I use these interchangeably, um, as the position function, the position of the particle. The particle. Um, so velocity, um, I'm putting this here. We're going to go over it more in class, but in case you want to pause and take a look at it, I put it here, as well as acceleration. I will tell you um, that units of velocity are meters per second, and since um, acceleration is a change of velocity, then the units are meters per second squared. Um, but the uh, upshot, and again, we'll go over this more in class, the velocity of an object p at time t is given by the derivative of displacement. In other words, we can find the instantaneous rate of change in position by taking the derivative. And if you think about that, that has to be the velocity, the instantaneous rate, uh, change in position of, uh, of an object. Um, and by the same token, if I change the velocity... I'm going to get acceleration, right? If you're driving along in a car and you're at a constant speed and you either hit the brake or you press down on the gas pedal, you are um, accelerating, you're changing the velocity, you're accelerating or decelerating. And that you can find the instantaneous rate of change by taking the derivative of velocity, or, which would be the second derivative of displacement. To find the initial conditions of an object, then I just let each of these guys, um, or let t equal zero, and evaluate those functions for t equal to zero, and I can talk about the initial conditions of the object in question. Sign interpretation here um, for displacement, we already talked about this in, in one of the first slides. Um, now remember, velocity is a vector function. Um, if I have the vector 1, 3, that gives me the, the direction, remember? This is the vector here represented by this um, vector notation, um, uh, giving me the direction going up and to the right. And if I take the magnitude of that, I get the speed. And because it's a vector function, then the velocity function tells us um, direction. Um, unless it's equal to zero, then it's really going in no direction. It's instantaneously at rest. If the velocity is positive or greater than zero, it's moving to the right. If it's less than zero, it's moving to the left. Um, and acceleration. 
If um, acceleration is greater than zero or positive, the velocity is increasing if you're stepping on the gas. If, you, if it's less than zero or negative, you're stepping on the brake and velocity is decreasing. And if it's equal to zero, then we have a max or a min or possibly a constant. It just depends on the function. Again, more in class. Um, what about speed? Well, we alluded to that um, just a second ago. Um, uh, velocity, let's say I have a velocity vector of negative 5, 0. Well, its speed, represented by capital S instead of little s, is equal to the magnitude of velocity, which e equals 5. So this, this indicates a horizontal move to the left um, uh, because there's no vertical change here in my vector. By the same token, if I had a displacement function of negative 5t, I take its derivative, the velocity is negative 5, well, this indicates a movement to the left at a speed of 5, whatever the units are. Um, so if, with taking the derivative um, all of, of the position function, all I have to do is take the absolute value and get the speed. Okay? This is very important right here and here. Okay? How do we know if our speed is increasing or if it is decreasing? Well, it's pretty simple. If velocity and acceleration have the same sign, in other words, if they're working together, then the speed of P is increasing. If the signs of V and T and A of T are different, they're working against each other, and the speed is decreasing. Okay? All right, so finally to an example, let's do this. Um, part A, find expressions for the particle's velocity and acceleration. Well, velocity um, is equal to the derivative of position. So S prime of T is equal to V of T, which is equal to 3T squared minus 3. We also have to make a sign diagram for this. I'm only interested in T greater than 0 because that's what it tells me. We're only interested in the time greater than or equal to 0. And solving for this, setting this equal to zero and solving, I get plus or minus one. Obviously, I'm only interested in positive one. And I will tell you this side, the sign diagram looks like this, which you already know how to do. And there is velocity. Acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity. So that's a of t. And that's clearly equal to 6t. And let's make a sign diagram here. And the only point of interest is zero. Um, and it's always going to be positive. So that's acceleration. Okay, find the initial conditions. Well, I let t equal 0 for all, all of these functions. So s of 0 is going to be, replacing t with 0 here, is 1, and it's a position or a distance, so that is in centimeters. v of 0 is going to be negative 3, replacing t with 0 right here in the velocity function. So that's going to be centimeters per second. And then acceleration, A of 0, is going to be equal to um, 0. So what does this tell me? Um, this tells me that the particle P is 1 centimeter to the left of the origin. Okay, I'm abbreviating here for time's sake. And... Um, is moving left, oh, that's a horrible M, moving left at 3 centimeters per second. How did I get that? Well, position function, 1 centimeter. Why did I put left? It's to the right because it is positive. Sorry about that. 1 centimeter to the right because this is positive. And is moving left because the velocity is negative. And since the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, it's moving at a speed of 3 centimeters per second. There is no change in acceleration, so I can't tell if it's increasing or, um, or it's not increasing or decreasing. C, what about at time t equals 2? Well, I'll find S of 2, which I will tell you is equal to 3 centimeters. Uh, v of 2 is equal to 9 centimeters per second. 
and a of 2 is equal to 12 centimeters per second squared. How did I get those? Same way I did with 0 by replacing in the respective functions. What does this tell me? This tells me that p, this tells me, is 3 centimeters um, right of the origin, of the origin, moving right, at 9 centimeters per second, the absolute value of velocity. I know it's moving right because it's positive. And the speed, it's a horrible E, the speed is increasing. It's increasing. How do I know it's increasing? Well, it's increasing because at time t equal to 2, 2 seconds, both the acceleration and the velocity are working together. If they're working together, then the speed is increasing. Okay, I'm going to stop and uh, we will do parts um, D through G in the next video.